What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be talking about Epical Regal and some of the updates that we've got. I've got Zach in here, a top tier player in the game. Go ahead and say hi to everybody, Zach. Hey guys, how's it going? So we're going to go ahead and jump back to March 25th. You know, it's a little behind here, but it's, you know, they had their NFT drops on OpenSea. We've kind of gone over it, showing the cards. I'll be sure to put in the links in the description on how you can get the NFTs and read the Medium article here. But there's a little nice juicy update at the bottom of this. So how to win a free unique Epical Regal NFT on top of many of the recent events and contests. We're excited to announce that we'll be hosting an NFT competition, airdrop, and giveaway too. Please note, now this is key. I, I, as many times I've scanned over this, I didn't even see this myself, Zach. But it says, please note that one member can only claim one NFT from all these contests. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how they're going to do it, whether it's maybe one has a higher rarity. And uh, if, you, if you're if you the top of two of them, maybe you just get the higher rarity one. I assume that's how they would just do it. And then it goes up to the runner up for the lower rarity card. Right. I'm sitting here trying to strategize how I can, you know, get all the NFTs out of them that I can. Then I read this today and I'm like, crap. I can only get one, which I totally get. That's cool. That's fair. You know, but how you can get them, the NFT airdrop first two discord members who will reach ER warrior level 15 will win a rare NFT card. And the first three discord members who reach ER warrior level 10 will win a common NFT card by the 30th of April. So join discord level up to win an exclusive epical regal airdrop. So, if you're hearing this and you're like, yeah, I want to get in there and spam, it will not count. They will cut that out and they will let you know, don't do that crap again or you're going to get in trouble because I know I'm one of them people. But anyway, back to the deal. NFT competition from the 1st to 30th of April, the top five players of Epical Regal Battle Game will get one unique Epical Regal card NFT we will reset the trophy cycle before the start of the competition to give all players a fair chance to participate and win. The NFTs to be rewarded for this competition will be different from the ones listed above. That's one thing that I find super interesting because um, I'm not sure if they're hinting like one of these competitions, you're going to get rarer NFTs than the other. Um, so maybe that makes a big difference on which one you really want to put your time and effort in because that big note up there is that you can only win one. So if the maybe the NFT competition has the rare one, and you really want to put in the work and grind up to that top one of those top spots, maybe that's the one you're going to go for. Yeah, and I'm kind of wondering if you've already purchased an NFT from there. Say you you know you wanted to go on the cheap side and get the common, which is cool. I get it. And, and I you know, picked one. Up that. I'm thinking because I'm I have, I'm deciding between um I like the Saha because I like that one because it's a. Uh, it's a, it's one of the ones I actually use, but I also really like the the Vera one because I, he's kind of climbing out of the frame, which I, I think is uh, pretty unique out of the ones. Yeah, he's definitely sweet looking for sure. So I was I was gonna buy the Canara the other day, and I've got my Coinbase wallet. I'm trying to buy it through, and for whatever reason, it's not letting me. So I'm gonna have to do, get it on the PC. So I've kind of got to you know look back on this, see if I could potentially win one of these, and. I was wondering if somebody's already bought all four or if you've bought the common and you hit that, you know, you, you win the common, will they upgrade you or how will they compensate it? Or will they just give you another one and you'll have two and maybe you can do a giveaway or sell it? You know, what do you think they would do? I think they're really going to be leaning like uh, of what I've heard to that pay to earn aspect. So I think a lot of that is the resell of the cards, right? So right now we're not seeing very much because that, the, the Epico token hasn't been integrated yet, but once it does and we kind of have that pay to earn aspect, I think um, it's not going to be that only a few of these NFTs are selling. I think all of them are going to eventually sell and it's going to be that kind of resale you see on all these other play to earn games. And maybe you can make a, a pretty buck for just picking it up for the retail price and someone pays you double just because they want to play the game and earn the token. Right. Absolutely. So we've got the NFT Easter egg hunt. Now this is going to be interesting you know, maybe we need to team up on this, see what we can come up with. But the Easter egg scavenger hunt giveaway will take place from April 
from the 13th of April, and entries will be open for the duration of three days. Out of all the entries, yeah. we will select five winners who will spot the Easter eggs, and they will be given eligible for exciting prizes. So that's going to be fun. I kind of wonder what the Easter eggs are going to be. Is it going to be like little pictures of guys in the corner holding up a number and you got to guess all three numbers? Like what, what do you think is going to come that way? Uh, I think some of the admins are going to maybe slide some stuff in into the discord. What in maybe it's in the gaming chat, like secretly, and then they play a whole bunch of games. So you have to really kind of go out of your way to find it. Um, I think that would be the best way to do it. But then again, if they're if they're more like, oh, here it is, everybody, that will give some of those newer players a, maybe a better chance of winning, which uh, would be nice because they probably want to maybe win an NFT themselves. So I think maybe being a little bit more obvious with it and not hiding them where they're hard to find will make it a little bit easier on the newer players. What if they did one in Discord, one in the Twitter spaces, and one in the game? So, like, you know when it loads up in between matches or when you're first loading it up, what if one of those Easter eggs pops up right there? That, yeah, that would be, actually be really cool because <laughs> that would be something I would miss because um, <laughs> Gallon of Tay mentioned uh, the, the, the like, there's that prompt up at, at, the, at the top about the – being, oh, be safe when you're playing, be always aware. And I, I never even noticed that. So if they throw an <laughs> Easter egg there, I'm not finding it. That's for sure. It'll probably say Easter egg equals this <laughs> and everybody will miss it. <laughs> I, like the idea. Maybe, I know they have a Telegram group as well. So maybe they're throwing them in all different things. So that, that would be a cool way of doing it. Yeah, that would definitely be pretty fun. So that's just kind of an older update that we hadn't covered yet. And we're going to jump into the one why probably most of you guys are here right now. And this is the Epical Regal Seasons Cups Reset 2022. So this is going to be season one in April, play to earn NFT project. Cups indicate your success in the game. Players gain or lose cups by either winning or losing battles. So... You know, when I first seen this, I was like, oh boy, like my mind started ramping up like crazy. I know yours did too. And, you know, it's kind of been in the talks for the last week. They've mentioned it in some AMAs and I was like, man, what are they going to do? So this finally come out and I'm like, super excited to go over this. Let's get into it. Cups indicate a player or kingdom skill rating. Players can gain or lose cups by either winning or losing battles. The cups you gain are dedicated from your opponent's cups count. The number of cups a player gains or loses is based on the number of towers you destroy in your opponents or vice versa. Beginning of Epical Regal League season, player cups will be reduced on the first day of each month at 12 a.m. IST. This system is set to make it more fun and challenging for all players. And at the end of each season, players in a league will lose a certain percentage of the cups depending on the rank they fall in. However, players who have achieved more than 20,000 plus cups as of the 30th of March, will be compensated with ethical, regal NFTs. Check out this article. So before we go any further, how, what do you, that was a lot to consume there. What are your thoughts? One thing that I'd just like to note, and it's a little bit of a change from what we're used to. Usually if you happen to lose a game, I know it's not always because we're mainly playing the AI and it's really hard to lose to them sometimes, but maybe you're not paying attention. You actually lose only about 20 trophies. And from what I understand here is I think you would lose as much as the opponent gains. And if they keep it as the same system where one tower or one tower is 28, two towers is 30, and then three towers is 32, you would actually be losing 32 trophies if you get three crown rather than just the 20 that you're normally using. I think that's an interesting thing to put in because maybe if you're losing really bad, you just say, oh, I'm just giving up on this game. And, or this this round and I'm just going to play the next one because I'm only going to lose 20 trophies. But now you kind of maybe want to stay around a little longer and make sure they don't get that round because you don't want to lose the 32. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So why did we introduce this change? Our goal is to give all players a fair chance to participate and win an Epical Regal League. This will help, help with better matchmaking and make moving your way up on the leaderboard more fun while also being challenging. Otherwise, it can be brutal experience if you're not a consistent player and it might get boring for the top players as they would 
have a lesser probability of getting matched up with real players. So I definitely glad to kind of see this, you know, I know it sucks when you first hear it, especially when you're like <clears throat> over at Turner Slick, where you got 9.3 billion trophies and they're going to reset your stuff down to a lower number. But, you know, they've, you know, Venkatesh has actually said that for those top players, they will be compensated for whenever they do this stuff because they're just absolutely killing it. You're on the top of the leaderboard and they really do want to reward those players. So at the same time, yeah, it sucks. But when you're getting rewarded and you're getting that OG status, you know, that's going to go a long way. And I think at the end of the day, a lot of people aren't going to be too mad about it. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's just a normal thing for these tower defense games that you have these seasons. And um, from what I've seen, a lot of them implement it because it just uh, you get these. If you just let people's trophies run up, you get again those huge wide varieties of skill, right? And you only if you're only matching with people that have the same trophies in, as you, it's, it gets harder and harder to play those real players because some guys are up at like old Bernard Slick, who's up at sixty thousand, and then some people are just uh, down at about 40 or 400 ish right yeah and you think about being you know early into the game and you think six months from now especially if he continues that pace which would just be insane could you imagine starting this game on day one and seeing somebody at three million trophies <laughs> yeah it would just be it would be crazy so I, I i have a hard time grinding where i'm just like oh, i get sick and tired of the bots but yeah i'm trying to get get more and more coins to finally unlock uh, Kinara, so I'm going to keep it up. Yeah, yeah, you're, you've been killing it for sure. There is no doubt about it. So, uh, Epical Regal League Season 1 Cups reset for April. For Epical Regal League Season 1 Cups reset cycle with the follow will follow the following parameters. We have introduced 13 cup ranges. Whichever category you may fall in, Cups will be reduced to the lowest set amount in the category. Below are the details. So if you're listening, I'm not going to read all these off, but the the if you fall in the 0 to basically 3,999, there will be no reset. And if you're in the 20,000 and above, you will be reset down to 20,000 every time. So when old Burnt Turnslick logs in, I guess the 1st of April, he's going to be sitting at a solid 20,000 trophies, or is it at the end of April that they're doing this? I believe it's uh, the end of March, so lead, leading into April, everything will be reset. Okay. One thing I'd say I'd look is if people um, have been grinding, maybe just take a quick look at this, um, compare it to your trophies, because for all you know, you might be just about into the next bracket, and you don't want to lose all those trophies if you only can, need to play a couple games to get up to that next bracket. Yeah, so you definitely have to uh, pay attention to this and remember it. You know, it's always subject to change. They'll get feedback, see what they need to do. So far, looking at this, you know, I feel like it's pretty fair because, you know, you're you're getting chests, you're getting trophies. If you're grinding all the way up that high and you get knocked back down, this I see this changing later on as we get more adoption. Plus, you know, it, once more people are in the game and you're actually playing PvP, you, you're not going to be able to accumulate those trophies as easily as you can now. So this 2,000 range might be kind of, you know, the top tier anyway. Yeah, definitely. I actually thought they were going to reset it way lower to closer to 4,000 at the start of that kind of top arena, but... They might be make. I know they're adding a couple new arenas with this uh, next month update, so maybe that that's kind of pushing the trophy count uh, a little bit higher. Yeah, looking at it, I think these numbers look pretty good, look pretty fair. I would almost say twenty to twenty five thousand and twenty five twenty five oh one to thirty thousand is going to be a good range coming in. But regardless, I'm glad to see it. You know, it's going to be a good motivator. You know, it kind of sucks for the top tier guys, but it seems like they're always going to be taken care of one way or another, whether it's probably going to give you chest or gold for, you know, hitting those top spots or whatnot. But at least it incentivizes the lower guys, the new people coming in to at least know they've got a shot to get caught up to everybody. Now, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So example... Go ahead. I, my main thing was just that um, uh, the a lot of people, their issue right now is you're playing bots and everything or playing AI. And um, 
having these resets, they may you may not be too happy with them, but that this is what's going to allow more people to easily jump onto the project. And you're going to slowly see that you're not going to be playing as many AI, or you're going to be shocked that you're all of a sudden three games in a row you've you've got real players that are whooping your butt, or mm -hmm. taking t catching you off guard. Because I, I know definitely when I run into a real player right now, I, I get taken <laughs> off guard. Yeah, you definitely got to rethink it. But, you know, throughout time, this is just going to organically, you know, take care of itself. And I don't think people are going to achieve the cups that they, they're they currently getting right now. So an example, if you stand on 10,900 cups, your cups will reset to 9,800 at the beginning of season one. Similarly, if you have 20,000 or above cups, you will restart season one at 20,000 cups. So, you know, just keep in mind at the first of every month, it seems you will be getting reset. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of rewards and stuff they do for the players. Um, I, I'm, I think the biggest thing for me is just curiously, where is the Epico token? How is it going to be integrated? Is it just going to be you can buy NFTs on their market with that token? Will you actually be able to earn in the game? How do you feel about that? And I'm just going off what I what I've understood from our, our chats with uh, Venkatesh and uh, just kind of the information they've released. What I what I, I I think what they were getting at was they they they, they are leading towards that pay to earn game where you can earn Epico Regal token, but due to some of the the laws with um, I assume it's the the App Store and Google Play Store, they can't have it directly in the app but they said they are going to have some sort of system that links it to maybe an online marketplace or that online marketplace they have where you earn tokens and then maybe you can um, buy that nft that you couldn't pick up now on the epic over regal marketplace with the the, the the coins you earn from the game right yeah i you know i was uh preloading some money on the hro hero platform today and if you do it mm -hmm. on the app like for five dollars, I think it costs eight dollars to put five on there because of fees. So like they're not kind of doing like VB and eating that cost from Apple and uh, Android where they they get a cut. They're they're kind of making yeah. you pay for it. But how you can get around that is if you get on PC and preload, I think it's dollar for dollar. They don't quote me on it, but that's kind of what I heard in the AMAs today on it. So it's it's. I'm kind of wondering if they're going to be doing something like that where there's a web platform where there's going to have that work around where you can play the game, but you can also get on the web platform to turn in your points to do stuff. So I don't know. It's just me thinking out loud, not saying that's the case, but I kind of see it going that direction, hopefully. Yeah, no, that's definitely a, a definitely one of the options. I'm, I'm very excited to see what they, they end up doing because I think it's going to, it's going to be really big. And I think there's going to be a huge influx of people very quickly. Absolutely. Cups reset from May for Epical Regal league season two. We made a new system of cup reduction along with the new, this new system. We have had, we have added three new badges in the game, champion, legend, and God all rank badges names will also be changed to make it more fun. Please note that these all will be in the May season two. So they're not coming just quite yet. You're going to have to wait a little bit longer to get these below are the details. So, uh, Squire at 5,600 Slayer at 6,600 gladiator at 7,600 veteran at 8,600 protector at 9,800 conqueror at 11,000 Lord at 12, 12,000, 12,200, Champion at 14,000, Legend at 16,000, and God at 20,000. So pretty much me, you, and you know a lot of the players are going to be sitting in that God badge right now if we can maintain that, which I'm sure we will be able to. And that's just kind of the, you know, a couple of the badges that you're going to be getting. How do you like those names? I, I like the names. I, I think the God one is, is kind of cool. Uh, I think it's pretty funny. Um, but um, I'd like to see a couple more badges when it comes to act like, um, in, like your guy, like what I've heard you want is the the leaderboard for the uh, top players that maybe have the fastest time and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see maybe a system where those are implemented in badges, so we don't have ten leaderboards and people are jumping between what they really want to accomplish. Like, and then you say, oh, I'm on the top of this leaderboard, so I'm better than you in that leaderboard. I don't know if that is going to get that competitive, but. I think the badge system where maybe if because you 
for the fastest time or the top three fastest time you have this special badge and like i uh, mentioned in the discord is i'd like to see it that you could maybe display three badges to the right of your name like mid game and if your opponent hovers over it it will be like oh this is or this is the badge for playing before season one or playing season one and it really shows maybe how long you've played yeah you could have it to where like you know your season one badge kind of what your rank was or if it falls in one of these categories that pops up or uh you know you're an early adopter i mean it's just really so many things and even they could even do achievements too if they don't want to get too many leaderboards going on, which I totally get. And then for like the fastest time, that's going to be kind of hard to integrate that just from a simple fact that, you know, if you're going player versus player and the guy leaves and you just mow him over, it's going to be hard to see who truly can do it the fastest. It was just something, you know, with playing bots, you know, that's where I've been trying to, you know, fine tune where I can just mow through them, but I can't get a stable you know, 40 second run by any means. <laughs> I think it's a little bit of luck with the bots where he, where they end up placing it. Cause I know some, when I, when I used to go for those fast or minute times, um, when I was a little bit of, of a lower level and it was a little bit easier to do so, um, I would find that the bot was one game, the bots would be just placing it perfectly to defend. And then other games, the bots are just, they took a day off. They're just letting me just destroy all their towers. Right. So depending on your rank, your cups retention will vary. And I'm not going to go over all these, but God, 30% cups reset. So I don't, let's see, that's for season two. So I guess for season one, they're only doing a 50% reset. I don't really understand this. Do you understand this that much? I was trying to, like, I, 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 I thought maybe it was like trophies over. You don't go straight down to two. 2000 like the what they had previously said where you go if you're in that bracket you go to 2000 maybe for the second season they've already they're already going past that and they're going to do this where maybe if you have um uh, 20,500 trophies you'll have 20 you'd get half of that but i'm not sure exactly that was a little bit confusing me as well okay here's an example let's see if this makes sense if you have 10,800 cups when season one ends, following the season reset, you will begin the new season two at 10,250 cups. So, I, I don't know. I assume that's like 40% maybe or 35. Uh, it looks like it looks like um I think it's the whatever category you fall in above, right? Whether you're the god or whatever. Um, if you had 800 trophies over top, you get hit. So let's say you're a squire and the squire is 56, uh, uh, hundred and you have uh, 5,700, then your cups above the cups that you have above that squire position, I think are going to be reduced by 50%. So you'd have, um, 56, 50, because this, that a hundred that you had over is being reduced. I think that's what they're getting at. But again, <laughs> Yeah, not hundred percent sure. <laughs> Still a little unclear. Maybe we'll figure it out. You know, when we see you know it in person and how it all works out. But it's it's interesting. It's something new, something to talk about. Uh, hopefully, it all works out good. And like I said, they'll fine tune this down to wherever they need to get it. So this means a fresh start for every new season. Every season, you will receive a new milestone reward as you progress through the leagues again. Good luck in the league and see you in the stadium. Epical Regal team. So that's just kind of a quick, you know, uh, uh, update on what's going on in the game. We've got cup resets, you know. We've mentioned in the, you know, in the Discord, which be sure to jump in there. They're super friendly. They're always wanting to hear feedback and talk to us, see what's going on in our head and how they can evolve the game. And before I forget, there's one thing I'm actually going to implement or, you know, talk about in there. Uh, probably whenever we get off here is, uh, Vanquitesh said that one of the favorite, his favorite games was age of empires, which I love that game. I've played it a lot and you know, the, the game still got a long way to go. And this is probably be years down the line when they get all their stuff fine tuned out. But with age of empires, I was thinking instead of having, you know, two, two castles to get through in your main castle. What if you did a solid line of castles, kind of like a, a castle wall that you got to try to penetrate to get through there. And you're like, okay, how are you going to do that? Well, 
instead of having your rasa one bar that can fill up all the way with rasa, make it like three bars of rasa, but it goes at a much faster rate where you got to just drop so much stuff to try to penetrate a whole solid yeah, line of... <laughs> And, and if you've ever yeah, played Age of Empires, you know, you can build those walls before you can get to the towers. So that was just something that kind of popped in my head. Do you think that'd be pre pretty crazy or too much? I think that would fall under the... I, I, I wanted to see a lot of, like, um, different game modes that maybe mm -hmm. they have, like, a cycle. Whether that's... I, I know you've said you like, you, you'd like, like, a faster game mode where you get... Maybe it's uh, times three Raza or something like that. So it's really fast-paced. I'd like to see maybe they have five of these kind of game modes. Maybe it's that Age of uh, Empires style you have. Maybe it's a, the faster pace. Maybe they have one where s cards are limited, where you have to use specific cards uh, for like a certain amount of time. I think having a cycle of that maybe for a week, you have that game mode, and the next week it's that next game mode. I think that would be a really interesting thing to add. You know, old Burn Turnslick, one of the things that he brought up uh that we talked about the other day was having multiples of one card. And maybe that's where these cards that don't get played too much could really shine. So I'm thinking like firecrackers. So what if you had multiple firecrackers you could put down at the bottom, put one of those big heavy tanks in the front to go, you know, start bashing on all those walls and all these firecrackers running up, just blasting it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, because then, uh, then I might just have an entire deck full of Nikul <laughs> and then just call it a day. Right. I don't know. That's just crazy it, stuff, man, that goes in my head. <laughs> but you yeah. never know. They, they listen to what you say. If they really like it, you, you might see it in the next update. Yeah, you never know. It's And, and you know, if you're listening, uh, you know, if you're driving, you're not. there's not a lot going on on the screen, but... Uh, this is the kind of crazy feedback that we give in the discord and they are always like, yep, we'll write it down. We'll talk about it. Or they'll be like, uh, that's interesting. So be sure to just, you know, always give any kind of insight, how we can advance the game. What do you want to see? What kind of crazy stuff? Cause they're extremely open to that and you never know what it might could happen. So we're going to go ahead. That's, we're going to close out Epical Regal for the most part, you know, unless you got anything else you want to bring up, Zach. No, I think we touched on all of it and all the recent stuff. I know it's a lot, and um, I think this uh, eight, coming April, you, I think a lot of people that maybe were like, like a little bit not happy with the app, I think they're gonna they're gonna definitely be way happier with it and love the new features that have been added. Yeah, I just think for the fact that you know they you know Vanquish brings up that they're not Board Ape Yacht Club, but I I truly believe that this is a lot bigger than Board Apes. Now, granted, they're not to their level right now, but the reason why I feel that way is they do have NFTs, they do have a functioning game, they've got the Epico token coming. If they can really figure out how to integrate that in the app, I feel like this would blow the doors off board apes because like I've said before, you know, Axie Infinity just to me is complete trash where this is a lot of fun. So where this could grow to is just, it's going to be crazy and I cannot wait to see what the team's got coming. One thing, one thing I'm like, I like to always think is that um, whether it's VV, whether it's Epico Regal, I think these style of whether you want to call them NFT platforms or play to earn games. I know Vivi's not a pay to earn game, but Epico Regal. I think these are really going to be the ones that target the the everyday person. I, I don't think um, either of us would ever go and buy a board eight because of how pricey they are. Right. And I really think this is where th that success is going to come from. It's that idea where maybe someone likes the idea of NFTs, but they realize, oh shoot, open seas is this giant world of confusion as well as if the actual ones that are maybe worthwhile, they're so expensive, then you get to go in and maybe you work, uh, you start playing Epico Regal and you can uh, play to earn your first NFT and you realize, oh shoot. And maybe it's not as pricey because they're really implementing for the everyday person where there are those higher end and older NFTs that will definitely gain value, but they'll definitely have ones for like the everyday Joe. So everyone can get a piece of it and everyone can have some fun. Absolutely. And you know, Board Ape Yacht Club was as cheap as what these NFTs are right now with no game tied to it. You know what I mean? 
So with this thing moving forward, because Board A, the only reason why it's successful to where it is today is because of the community. It is community driven. Like those guys are just driving it every day. Now, could you imagine what Board Apes could be worth if they had some kind of functioning game that was fun to play with it? I think they would be. I, I, it's, I think it'd be. It's kind of scary to even think to right. how much they're worth, right? Now. <laughs> but yeah, they would. They. I think they'd go through the roof. And yeah, yeah. So it would, rather, it would be more uh, pay to earn, and people would be having a lot of fun with it as well, rather than that kind of that status symbol. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the, he's talking about bringing the Indian co- the culture in here, and they've got some celebrities coming. So you know, you we're all in here early. And where this could go is is just crazy to think about, especially when you compare it to what we just said. So I can, I, like I said, I'm just bullish on this project. I'm ready. I'm ready to get my tokens. I'm ready to get my NFTs. I'm, let's get this baby going. So we'll go ahead and get into some uh, VV news. Just a little quick update, you know, kind of get everybody in the loop. They've got Amazing Spider-Man 101 comic dropping tomorrow. I was listening to AMA earlier about this, and the guy said this is like a D rank. It's going to be uh, not very appealing in the marketplace. You're looking at about probably a four fifty, four dollar and fifty cent common uh, secondary. You know, I'm going to go for the drop because it's like scratching a lottery ticket. But the the real big one coming up is the Rewind Collective House of Cards Series One, and you know this is going to be. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight cards in total, which is crazy. Yeah, and I, I they're all pretty well done. And the one thing that I find I find interesting, and I'm getting a little bit more speculation than information, is that you've noticed that a lot of these drops uh, from these uh, collectors uh, have been a bit related to Disney. And my example would be is that. Um, you know the Matt Gondyke mm-hmm. uh, thing one we had um, of the, his painting. It's supposed to be like Mickey's hand, right? And stuff and his, so yes. he's licensed by Disney now. And now you have the, this kind of independent artist group coming out with M- Mulan, which is another Disney asset. That's one thing that I've I've kind of noticed in the back of my head, and I really find it really interesting. Like maybe we'll start to see even more of these um, solo artists do, doing um, doing Disney projects, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, they, uh, they, <laughs> there's a lot of writing on the wall with Disney and Vivi, you know, hopefully that continues because I'm super bullish on all that. These, the, the prior ones they come out with have held value really well. They've been really sought after by the community. So I'm definitely going to be trying to get these, uh, even though there is a lot of them, there's not a lot of mints though. We're looking at 999 per card. All right, so these are pretty rare, and I've got to admit, with the market being down like it is right now, I'm super excited about it. I'm figuring you'll probably be able to pick these up, you know, whatever the the least sought after, probably 150 bucks to 200. I figure that whatever one's going to go for the most, probably Mulan. Uh, you're looking at three, three fifty, but you compare it to the Disney Golden Moments, and they're really still cheap compared to what the first series is. Now, granted, it's not the first series; it's second, but it's still a Golden Moment from Disney. So, it, the way the old ones have held up, I really do want to try to get this whole collection. So, are you going to be going for it? And which one are you looking forward to the most? Um, I'm just taking. I I like the Mulan one because um I remember. That was a movie that I had watched a few times when I was a kid, and um, I, I think it, that's the com. Is it a com? No, they're all nine nine nine, so they're all ultra rare. Yeah. Um, I don't really know. I, I I know the names. I know Joan of Arc. I know Elizabeth the first, but they, other than that, they don't really have any uh, sentimental value to me. And I, I kind of like that. If you can pick one, if you if you if you could choose one that you get that kind of sentimental value as well as that kind of uh, profit value as well. Because I don't really know who Frida Kahlo is. In, I don't know if you do, but... Um. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will say, though, I do like this... Uh, where is it at? It is the Harriet Tubman. She's sitting there holding a gun, so that's got that's the winner for me, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one is very cool. But I, yeah. They're all really cool. I, 
like the frames and everything, they almost remind me kind of like, to me, like old Yu-Gi-Oh cards, kind of that style of, of look, but they, they are really nice and well done. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to be, I'm going to be going for it for sure. I'm going to try to get the whole set. Now, whether or not it happens right off the rip, I've kind of found that if you wait, you know, three to four days at a minimum, you're going to probably start seeing the best prices. But here lately, everything just keeps going down. So I'm not sure it's going to take a big announcement for this to kind of recover back to its all time highs. So we're going to, we're going to try to get it and see what's going on. Uh, me and Zach, you know, also in the Discord, we've been doing a lot of friendly battles. Vanquatesh, the CEO of Epical Regal, has been doing friendly battles with us as well. You know, it's, it's we're having a lot of fun playing each other, making fun of each other, even trying new, you know, cuts of cards that we can, you know, try to figure out a new meta deck, and we just quite ain't done it yet. Jump in there, you know, challenge us, challenge the big man, the CEO himself, Vanquatesh. He'll get in there and fight you, and believe me, if... Uh, you win, he'll let everybody know. <laughs> Ain't that right, old Burn Turns Lick? But, you know, but yeah. Uh, Zach, I appreciate you coming on here, brother. Uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and close this out. So if you got anything else to say, go ahead and say it. I said it last time, uh, the, the same last video I was in, I was like, if you, you're thinking about maybe downloading Epico Regal, seeing what it's all about, it's the perfect time to with this big update coming in April and all these opportunities to maybe win some free NFTs. And I, everyone likes the idea of free, so it never hurts, you know? Especially That's... the Easter egg one would be a very easy one for people to all get into, and you, you might get lucky. Yeah, and if you're slick and you ain't got no trophies, you could step in the game and win you an NFT before you even get started. So be sure... Jump in the Discord. I've got a Discord. Jump in there. Be sure to like if you like this whole video. You know, comment, subscribe, all that stuff, because I want to hear from you. And until next time, we'll holler.